Uh, morning, Wayne. Uh, I'm guessing you're probably putting in maybe more work with the HDA than you uh, originally thought. Uh, but I'm wondering, uh, you do have a day job, and uh, I'm wondering how important it is for you to, to find the time uh, to do both, uh, given what's been happening this year around the, around the league and hockey in general. Yeah, uh, first of all, it's definitely not more work than we originally thought. We knew we would have, um, you know, a lot of stuff to combat. Um, unfortunately, in our line of work, um, you know, we're the minority and, you know, things like this, um, you know, things that have happened, I think, especially over the last week, couple weeks to, um, you know, I can even go back, well, you can go back forever, uh, quite frankly, but um, this is this is kind of why we, we form. This is why, you know, we all came together. We want to help, you know, combat racism in the, in the, in the great game of hockey and, um, you know, we're still seeing that these things are still happening. Um, you know, it's unfortunate that they're happening, but I think, you know, they're just being outed a little bit more. Everything that's happening now was happening in the past. Um, you know, fortunately for us, we have, you know, camera phones. Um, there's, there's mics everywhere. And, you know, I think it's just becoming, you know, people are becoming more aware because, you know, just the social media time that we live in. But um, in saying that, you know, we're going to continue to do, um, you know, as much work as we possibly can to eradicate racism from our game. Um, we know it's going to take a long time, um, but slowly but surely, you know, we're getting on the right side of things. Um, I, I feel like we're starting to gain more allies, um, you know, in our cause. And, you know, that's only going to be better for us, you know, better for the game. And, you know, it's going to truly make this game, you know, a lot better. Thank you. Next up, we'll go to Kevin McGran, Toronto Star. Go ahead, Kevin. On that same note, Wayne, what's it meant for you personally to have uh, Mark Frazier within the organization sort of coaching the guys on diversity and, and, and equality and those sorts of things? Um, it's been huge. Um, you know, obviously, you know, with Frazier being black, he's gone through, you know, a lot of the things that I've gone through. And it's nice to, you know, hear it, you know, from someone else that's not yourself. Um, you know, I feel like sometimes, you know, you get thinking in your mind and you're like, uh, you know, you know, people are doubting you, doubting everything that you're saying, and um, you know, not necessarily all the time are people believing what's going on. But when you have so many people, um, you know, attacking the issue at the same time, I think it makes it a lot more believable. Um, so, you know, what Frazier has done for us, um, you know, he, he's lent his voice uh, to helping us, um, you know, understand, you know, what goes on, you know, behind closed doors, you know, in front of your face. And I think Frazier has been doing an unbelievable job with us and. Um, you know, all the other guys in our organization. What did you think of John Tavares starting his scrum the other day, just, just talking about doing more to eradicate racism uh, from hockey? He wasn't, he wasn't asked that he just started the conversation. Yeah, I, th I think our organization, you know, does a good job getting ahead of it. Um, you know, I think most of the things that you hear are kind of reactionary, and we want to be more proactive. And I think especially in the Maple Leafs organization, we have, we have a lot of different, you know, cultural backgrounds that work within – um, you know, MLSE and the Toronto Maple Leafs, and um, we, we don't stand for that. Um, so, obviously, Johnny starting his scrum without you guys even asking questions is, you know, an unbelievable sign. Um, you know, I, I personally feel uh, the most comfortable I felt in the NHL locker room, um, you know, once I joined the Maple Leafs. Um, you know, I know every single man in here has my back, and, you know, for me, that's a comfort level. So now... I think the goal is, you know, to build that out to every organization, um, you know, across the NHL. It starts here, but obviously going into grassroots and the minor leagues and stuff like that, I think everyone, you know, any player of color should, should feel that way. Thanks, Wayne. Next up, we'll go to Mark Masters, TSN. Go ahead, Mark. Wayne, what stands out about the Love Scarborough campaign? Um, I think it just illustrates... Um, you know, the love that every Scarborough native has, you know, from being from Scarborough. If you ask somebody from Scarborough if they're from Toronto, they're going to tell you, no, they're from Scarborough. Um, you know, and I think when, when you put that into, you know, when you really think about that, obviously Toronto is one of the biggest, you know, metropolises, I think, in North America. And for people to be so proud of being part of one place, you know, everyone pools their own resources, um, you know, to help one another. And, um, you know, obviously with this, found, um, you know, with the Love Scarborough campaign going on here, I think it's no different. Um, you know, everyone's trying to chip in, help out, and, you know, give back to the place that, you know, we call home. We'll take two more here. We'll go to Dave McCarthy, NHL.com. Go ahead, Dave. 
Hey, Wayne, uh, Drew Doughty's coming up on playing his 1,000th game. Uh, you were with him in L.A. when he broke in. Um, what do you remember about him as an 18-year-old in his first camp? Did he look like an NHL player to you right off the bat? Uh, me and Delts go back further than, than even that. Um, I remember me playing in Owen Sound, and uh, Delts was in Guelph, so we were rivals, and I think we hated each other for the first little <laughs> bit until... Um, we we happened to stumble upon each other as roommates at World Junior Camp, and um, you know ever since then, you know we've been more like brothers than friends. And to see Doubts reach a thousand games to me is you know unbelievable. I know where he comes from. His parents are salt of the earth people, and they raised him the right way. And you know Doubts to me has been an unbelievable uh, human being. Um, you know, so I can speak to Doubts, you know, outside of hockey. And then when it comes to hockey. You know, what is there to be said? Um, two-time Stanley Cup winner, two-time Olympic gold medal um, winner. Um, you know, he's done countless things, um, you know, for his community in London and for the community in Los Angeles. Um, you know, I can go on and on and on. But um, for me to see, you know, one of my best friends reach the 1,000 games plateau, it just makes me extremely proud. Um, you know, all the work he's put in, um, you know, it's just culminated to come and culminated to this point. And, you know, I know he's got a lot more hockey left in him. So, um, you know, I love that guy. I can honestly say that. So I'm extremely proud of him. Just one follow up if I could. How was he off the ice? Uh, in, in LA, he was the best. He was the, was the, he was the, the, he, the friendship kind of began. Uh, we were already friends before that. I, th I always bug him. He followed me to LA. He wanted to be with me so bad. Um, but uh, he, um, you know, he, he was the best roommate I could possibly ask for. Um, you know, everything that we did. You know, it was obviously when you're young like that, he was he was 18 turning 19. I had just turned 20 going into our first um, NHL um, regular season. I remember he had to live with uh, Matt Green because they didn't think <laughs> he could handle himself by um, – handle living away from home by himself for the first little bit there. And, you know, I had um, separate roommates. I was I lived with Oscar Moeller and Kyle Quincy was kind of the older guy there who, who helped us out. But, you know, I just remember our two houses were always together. And, you know, we were always hanging out, making sure that each, each and every one of us, you know, was taken well care of. You know, Matt Green did a great job at that since he was the elder statesman at that time. And, um, you know, he, he helped form us into, you know, what I would call as, you know, a great brotherhood. And, um, you know, that's continued to today. So um, he was a great roommate. You know, he looked out for me. I looked out for him. You know, I, I, you know, I can't say anything bad about the guy. That's for sure. And last one here, we'll go to Adam with NHL.com. Go ahead, Adam. Yeah, hey, Wayne, just one more on Dowdy, if you don't mind. Yep. You know it's like at, at 18 to come into the NHL, or, you know, you're in the NHL as a rookie. He's in the NHL at 18. Did he look like an NHL player at that first training camp when you saw him? Did he look like a guy who was ready right out of the box like that? He was the best defenseman on our team from day one, um, if you ask me. I think we had a lot of great veteran leadership, a lot of guys who, who helped him, um, you know, like hone his game. But you could just tell from the skill aspect, the way he thought it, the way he moved, he was just at another level. Um, I think his first year he had pretty decent stats, um, you know, offensively, but his game was predicated on defense, and I think you saw that. Um, I think our second year he blew it away offensively. You know, he combined, um, you know, his defensive awareness with his offensive skills. And um, since that point, he's been a perennial Norris Trophy candidate. And, um, you know, he's still still playing great hockey to this day. So, yeah, he, he was definitely ready at 18. Thanks, Wayne. No problem, guys. Thank you.